الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين والصفوة من صحابته المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون The services in Islam and the ibadat, the worshippings has been divided into ranks and levels. Some of them are higher than the others. So what is the best type of worshipping and service in Islam? The Prophet, peace be upon him, says the highest ranking, the highest ranking worshipping and ibadah and service in our religion is the dua, the supplication when you speak with God. When you speak with God, this is the most honorable type of worship you are performing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ad-du'a mukhul ibadah. The nerve system of the worship and the service is supplication and dua. When you speak to God, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wassalam says, Afdalu al-ibadat al-du'a. The best time, the best type of service, serving God and worshipping God, is when you speak to God, when you recite the du'a. Ma min shay'in afdalu inda Allah min an yus'al Allah wa yutlabu ma inda. Nothing is better than asking God and demanding of what he has in his treasures. Asking him. وَمَا أَحَدٌ أَبْغَضْ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِمَّنْ يَسْتَكْبِرُ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهِ وَلَا يَسْأَلُ مَا عِنْدَهِ And nothing is more disliked than the person who disdains from asking God. He doesn't want to ask God. This is, this is a sign of conceit and arrogance. And it is mentioned in the Quran. God says those arrogance are the ones who do not ask me. Do not pray to me. In the Ladina. In Waqala Rabbukum Adruni Astajib Lakum. In the Ladina Yastakbiruna and Ibadati Sayyid Huluna Jahannam Adahirin. They are disdaining from asking me. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Always ask God. Even if you are very comfortable, even if you have everything around you, even if you are in peace, even if you have food, you have money, you have health, you have fa family, you have success, still you need to ask God. Ask Him. Ask Him of His bounties. The Prophet says, you are not going to lose anything if you ask God. In fact, you are going to gain one of the three things. When you do dua, when you make dua and ask God, Definitely you're going to score one of these three points. Number one, In al abda the servant, la min illa thalatha. A true servant is not going to miss when he prays to God. He's not going to miss. But he's going to score one of these three. Number one, Imma Dambun God would forgive your sins. The second, وَإِمَّا خَيْرٌ يُعَجَّلُ لَهُ Some goodness that has been reserved there for you, but it has been put on hold. On hold. Sometimes God says, I'm going to answer your prayers, but not now. I'll put it on hold. So when you pray, that goodness is going to be expedited and sent to you with overnight mail. It comes to you fast. وَإِمَّا خَيْرٌ يُعَجَّلُ لَهُ وَإِمَّا خَيْرٌ يُدَّخَرُ لَهُ Sometimes you ask God, He does not answer you immediately the same day, the following day. He is going to reserve the answer 
reserve the goodness for you for the, for the future. But my friends, the dua has manners and adab. And the Prophet and our Imams, they walk us through the manners of dua. How do you, how do you ask God? What do you tell him? In what manners you speak to him? These are mentioned in our traditions. Number one, number one, there are specific times, prime times for supplications. The supplications is answered and God listens to it all the times. But God says there are specific times that I would pay more attention to. One of these times comes every week on Thursday night, Laylatul Jumu'ah. Wa Naharul Jumu'ah, the day of a Friday. So 24 hours from sunset of Thursday until sunset of Friday. This is the prime time to recite dua, to ask God, to turn to Him, to be with Him. This is one. The second, Yawmu Arafah, the day of Arafat. Also, it's a day of dua. The third, the nights of Qadr. These are the best prime times of supplication and prayers and du'as. So don't miss the nights of Qadr. Wherever you are, even if you can't make it to the mosque, in your house, in your bedroom, in your living room, try to turn to God with a clean heart, pure intention, and ask Him for yourself and for your family. And also every night, just before dawn, before Fajr, and that time is called, do you know what is called that time? It's mentioned in the Quran. It's mentioned twice, three times. Wabil asharihum yastaghfirun. Wabil ashar. It is the sahar. Sahar means it is the last part of the night. An hour, an hour before Fajr. Fajr today, let's say it's about 4.15. So from 3.15 until 4.15, that is the best time of these 24 hours. The best time to stand and talk to God. I always say, if you can't do 11 rak'ah, you can do the 3 rak'ah of Salatul Layl. If you can't afford 11, too much for you, do the 3. If you can't do the 3, do 1 rak'ah with qunud. If you can't do 1 rak'ah, you are in your bed, open your eyes, close your eyes, whatever you want to do. In darkness, say, Ya Allah, I need you. You are my only help. You are my only hope. You are my only friend. At a time, sometimes my family would abandon me, my friends would abandon me, but you don't abandon me. So I need you, please. I need you. Don't leave me alone. Talk to God. Talk intimately to God. He would respond to you. It depends on the quality of your talk, on your condition, on your heart. If your heart is really connected to him, definitely he's going to answer you. He's going to answer you. This is waqtu al-sahar. Wa bil-asharihum yastaghfirun. Wa al-mustaghfirina bil-ashar. So this is the prime time of every night. In min al-sahari, the hadith says, in min al-sahari ila tulu'i al-shams tuftahu abwaabu al-sama. The gates of heaven are going to be opened during that time. You know, most people, they shut their doors. They shut their gates, except the gate of God. In the middle of the night, his gate is never shut. It's always open. Your provision, your risk is going to be determined during this Sahar time. Can you imagine? Most people, they sleep during this time. Allah decides that your risk, your provision, your sustenance is going to be determined now. I'm determining it now. And your great need, sometimes the need is simple, easy. But sometimes the need is a huge. You have a big haja. These huge needs are going to be fulfilled during this time of sahar. From one hour before dawn, before Fajr, until sunrise, which is about two hours and a half. Two hours and a half. You have this window that you speak to God because this is the prime time. This is where God wants you to stand 
before him and ask him. And then there are certain conditions that the dua is going to be listened to faster with more intention. One of them is Nuzul al Matar. Nuzul al Matar, Nuzul al Ghayf. When the rain comes down, I know here we in California we wait for the rain, we get excited. So when you see the rain, even if it is drizzling, few drops, immediately go under the sky. Say, first of all, Ilahi, my Lord, thank you for this rain. We really need the rain. And then start asking him your other needs. Pray for your parents, your family, your cousins, your community, your friends. Remember them during the rain. وَمَا بَيْنَ الْأَذَانِ وَالْإِقَامَةِ when you do the Adhan and after the Adhan Iqamah, if you are in the Masjid, I know when Adhan is being done, people speak. People at the back, especially women, mashallah. <laughs> Whatever story they have, they, they do it during the Adhan. This is a holy time. We have to listen to the Adhan. First of all, if the Adhan is raised, we have to repeat the Adhan. I mean, silently, not with a loud voice. If the Mu'adhan says, Allahu Akbar, we say, Allahu Akbar. If he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. We say hayya ala salah, hayya ala falah. And then between the adhan and the iqamah also, this is the best time to ask God. وَعِنْدَ الصَّلَوَاتِ الْمَكْتُوبَةِ The five daily prayers. Once you finish your prayers, do not just get up and leave. This is not good. Stay three minutes, three more minutes, two more minutes. Do the tasbih. Tasbih al-zahra. That is the best type of dhikr. أحسن الذكر. The best type of dhikr, dhikrullah, is when you do the tasbih 34 times, Allahu Akbar, 33 uh, times, Alhamdulillah, and 33 times, Subhanallah. One person told me, he said, I, what I like about the school of Ahlul Bayt is that when I was someone else, different path, once we, as the Imam says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum, we get up and we leave. And Imam is the first one to leave, mashallah. <laughs> But when I came to Ahlul Bayt Mosque, Alhamdulillah, you do tasbih, you do dhikr, you do dua, you shake hand with others. This is the time where Allah listens to you, and pays attention to you. So remember, with every salat, after every salat, we have ta'qib. What is the meaning of ta'qib? Ta'qib in Arabic means what comes after. Ta'qib, yu'aqib, what comes after. So what comes after the prayers is the dua. So stay. If you are in the masjid, read the dua. Don't speak, especially in Ramadan. The mushtaba, Hajj mushtaba is reading dua, and mashallah, the, the tables are filled, and women start, and men, not just women. We don't respect the dua. Dua is the, not less than important than the prayers, the salat itself. So wa'inda as-salawat al-maktuba. These these places and these occasions are prime time for the dua. And then, وَحَالَةُ السُّجُودِ أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهْوَ سَاجِدٌ فَأَكْثِرُ فِيهِ The best time where you get the closest to God is when you do the sujood, prostration. Physically, you are the lowest. Physically, you are the lowest. You put your forehead on the ground, but spiritually you are the highest. Spiritually you become the highest, the closest to God, the nearest to God. أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ So try at home when you do your prayers, the sujood, prolong your sujood. Don't do it fast. Enjoy your sujood. لَوْ يَعْلَمُ الْعَبْدُ If the servant knows how he is going to be overwhelmed with God's mercy and blessing. He or she wouldn't have raised their head from sujood. If only we know how much God is going to bestow us, how much of his blessing and mercy. So halatu sujood, whenever you have urgent dua, don't do it when you are sitting or standing. Go to sujood. Go to the sujood, prostration, and then ask God when you are in the state of sujood. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is the, the, the dua that he used to do ya khayr al, in, in his sujood. Ya khayr al-mas'uleen wa ya khayr al-mu'teen. 
ارزقني وارزق عيالي من فضلك فانك ذو الفضل العظيم. One of the du'as that the Prophet used to do in his sujood. Now, it is also mustahab that when you raise your hand in du'a after you finish, you wipe your face with your hand. Why? The hadith says, whenever a servant, whenever a servant, whether adult, young, child, men, women, raise his or her hand for dua, Allah would not return his hand empty-handed. Allah will put some of his blessings in that hand. So when you raise your hand for dua, whether it's in the prayers or after the prayer, especially after the prayers, once you finish the dua, wipe it on your face or wipe your face with your palm because the blessings of Allah is in your palm, in your hand. ما أبرز عبد يده إلى الله العزيز الجبار إلا استحى الله تعالى أن يردها صفرا. Allah would not return his hand empty. صفرا means empty. حتى يجعل فيها من فضل رحمته ما يشاء فإذا دعا أحدكم فلا يرد يده حتى يمسح على وجهه. Once you do the dua, then wipe your face with it because your hand now is full of blessings. The other condition of the dua, how do we do the dua? Do we do it with loud voice? We scream, oh Allah. Sometimes, of course, people scream, I know. My mother used to scream when we were running, you know, around. And... But this is not the etiquette, the right etiquette of dua. Dua, Allah teaches us how do we pray, how do we mention him in the last verse in Surah Al-Isra, chapter 17. Neither scream, tajhar. Don't. Allah is there. Musa said to him one day, Oh my Lord, how do you want me to call upon you? Should I scream or should I be silent? Which one? Which one you prefer? Allah said to him, Musa, once you remember me in your heart, I'll be sitting next to you. I'll be next to you. So you don't have to scream. You don't have. The only one who has good ears, sometimes we call on our children, our neighbors, our wives, our friends, they don't answer. They pretend that they, do, they don't hear. They don't listen. But Allah is the one who always listens and he hears you. يا أسمع السامعين يا أبصر الناظرين يا أحكم الحاكمين We will recite these things إن شاء الله in dua جوشن الكبير during the nights of القدر in this mosque So Allah can hear you كاف هاء يا عين صاد ذكر رحمة ربك عبده زكريا Allah praises زكريا Why? إذ نادى ربه نداء خفيا Zakaria was an old man. His wife was very old. And he wanted a child. He wanted a child. He kept saying, Rabbi la tadarni fardan wa anta khairul warithi. Oh God, do not let me leave this life without offspring, without children. So give me at least one son, one daughter. I don't want to leave this life with no legacy. He kept praying. But he kept praying, how? In a private إِذْ نَادَ رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيًا In secret. Why in secret? Because you're going to be have more ikhlas. More sincerity. When you speak to God in secret, you're going to have more earnestness and more ikhlas and more sincerity. Rather than shouting and letting all people know what you are doing, you are doing that in private. And the Prophet ﷺ says, دعوة واحدة تخفيها أفضل من سبعين دعوة تظهرها One dua, one single dua, that you keep it low, keep it private and secret, تخفيها, you can seal it, better than 70 times of dua will you do it in public. Because when you do it in secret, this is just between you and God. You are not sharing that with others. And it has more ikhlas when you are alone by yourself. By yourself. The Prophet said, 
sometimes one of you ends up in, in a desert, somewhere, you know, no man's land, nobody is there. And the time of the prayers arrives, and he does wudu there, and he stands to do his prayers where no one is there. The only person, the only human is him. Allah would be proud of that person. God is going to brag about him. He says to his angels, look at my abd, my servant. No one is in this, in this land, in this desert, in this corner, in this. But he remembered that this is the time of the prayers. Because he wants to come to me. So now I ask you, my angels, to go down and pray behind him. He becomes an imam, not for Orange County Masjid. He becomes an imam for the angels. Angels are praying behind. Although, mashallah, you are angels and better than angels. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I should say this. Okay. And then, when you do your dua, make your dua simple. Don't make it Shakespearean dua. You know. <laughs> make it very simple. Allah, some people, they know the grammars, they know how to speak, they are very eloquent, they are very profound, but Allah wants your dua to come from your heart, even if your language is broken. You don't speak good English, you don't speak good Arabic, you don't speak good Farsi, you don't speak good Urdu. Allah looks at your heart. He wants your dua to be spontaneous and natural. Natural. You know natural? Without takalluf. You don't pretend something. You, don't, you are not pretending. The dua you send it from the bottom of the heart. And make it simple right to the point. You know the best dua? The dua that has came at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2 in the Holy Quran. We read this sometimes in Salat Al-Jumu'ah. It has only seven items. The best dua has only seven items, no more. Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina aw akhtana. Second, Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamilta wa ala alladheena min qablina. Third, Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqata lana. Seven items. Very simple. That's the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. We do this on Fridays. Very simple. Seven points, one after the other. Make your dua spontaneous. Do not exaggerate. Tell him what is in your heart. And Allah does understand all accents and all languages and all cultures and all gestures. And then, after that, two more items. And after that, we uh, come to another. Uh -huh. The other thing of the manners of dua is do not ask Allah something haram forbidden or something irrational. Don't ask him, oh Allah, let me you know, own this liquor store so I can make, you know, thousands of dollars. Liquor store or gambling, you know, whatever, casino in, in Vegas so I can make money. Don't, don't do. This dua is haram. Allah is not going to listen to this. Nor ask something which is a violation or a sin. One woman was asking Allah, she loved a man who was married. Oh Allah, makes his wife die so I can marry her. Allah would never listen to this dua, believe me. Don't waste your time. So, do not ask something which is illegal or immoral or irrational. Or some people say, oh Allah, just five million dollars. Just five million, mashallah, you are so generous. Again, Allah would never listen. Allah says, you want money? Go and work. I'm not going to send you blank check. I'm not going to say, yes, at times of emergency, I save you. I send you some money for emergencies. But $5 million? No, no, I have wisdom. I have cause and effect. I have organization in this universe. I have discipline. You want to destroy the discipline? I don't do this to you. Yes, sometimes if your boat is a broken, capsizes in the ocean, I can send someone to save you. I can do these miracles. But to send you five million dollars, this is not a miracle. This is not even wisdom. 
This is not even a gift. God is not going to do that. So don't ask these things. Ask what is really doable and rational. Yes, someone, the doctor says, listen, I'm doing my best to save his life. Go on and pray. God will, will perform miracles here. God would interfere. In these cases, God would interfere. This is a rational request. But asking something, you know, like the other guy who was asked, always asked to, to marry the king's daughter. The king's daughter. And when they asked him, okay, are you prepared? He said, everything is prepared. Everything except one thing, the approval of her father. You know. <laughs> everything is okay, ready. Only her father has to accept. These things are irrational and we should not waste our time. For Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam says, Ya sahib dua la tas'al ma la yakunu wa la yahil. Do not ask what is not going to happen neither what is not permitted. Stay away and be wise in this. And inshallah, tomorrow we're going to continue on the second part of the manners of dua. We learn them now to incorporate them during this month, inshallah. The month of Ramadan, my friends, is the month of dua. And we are coming to the Layal al-Qadr slowly, slowly. So we have to build up, build up this energy from now, the beginning of the month, so when the, nine, the night of the 19th, 21st, 23rd, and after that 25th, 27th, they arrive, you are ready, inshallah. You are ready to commit yourself to prayers and supplication and dua. Please recite this ayah with me five times. لِشِفَاءِ الْمَرْضَى وَقَضَاءِ الْحَوَائِجْ Many of our friends, I know them, they would come in Ramadan to the masjid, but these nights they cannot come because they are bedridden, either in the hospitals or homes, and also many people have hawa'ij and needs, and these are the nights of dua, Liali Ramadan. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Amman yujibu al-muhtarra idha da'ah wa yakshifu al-suh, Amman yujibu al-muhtarra idha da'ah wa yakshifu al-suh, أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء يا الله يا مجيب دعوة المضطرين يا قاضي حوائج المحتاجين اللهم من على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية المريضة المنظورة وجميع المرضى المنظورين اللهم ألبسهم ثوب الصحة والعافية اللهم تقبل صلاتنا وصيامنا وقيامنا ودعاءنا وقرآننا في هذا الشهر العظيم واجعلنا من عتقائك من النار وعجل في فرج إمامنا وسيدنا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والشهداء ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد